As Sarah was singing that song, I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, what, what, what is it that you want me to pray about? And what I, what I hear is, you know, God won't let go of you. But then the question is, will you let go of God? That's the first thing I heard. And the second thing I, 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 was, I was praying about, and I, Lord, I, you know, stop being a sofa praying individual. Some of you need to get up off the sofa, stop praying, and start moving. Somebody watching this needs to get off the sofa. They, they, they're questioning why is it things happening. The question is, are you playing your part? Get off the sofa and start praying and moving. Pray and move. Pray and move. He doesn't want you to pray and stop moving. He wants you to pray and move. So number one, are you gonna are you gonna let go of God? Because like the song says, he won't let go of you. And number two, get up and pray and move. Pray and move. Lord, you're an awesome God. You're a wonderful God. So thank you so much. As we humbly approach your throne of grace, saying thank you for the access that you have given us to such a mighty, mighty God. So we ask that you have your way and say thank you for not letting go of us. But right here, right now, today we proclaim we're not going to let go of you. Like I said last Sunday, I'm going to touch the hem of the garment if I have to. I'm going to grab on whatever I have to grab on to say holding on to you, whether it's the love of God, the grace of God. I'm going to hold on to something and not let go. So we ask that you have your way through the rest of this service. Touch the man of God as he speaks a word, not just in season, but a word that will take us through the seasons of our life. The ups and downs, the ebbs and flow, the good and the bad, the joy and the heartache, the pain. So Lord, we ask that you have your way and say thank you for not letting go of us. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen and amen. I, I, I'm going to behave. I'm going to behave. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name. We worship you. Bless your name, O oh Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You finished praying? <laughs> I'm like, okay, we're going somewhere else. I was I'm just like, getting into it. Are we going to get the anoint you? What, what do you need? That was, <laughs> I mean, between the worship, the special music, your prayer, the anointing, the presence of God. Yes. Oh, man. You could get lost in that. That's why I'm looking forward to getting back into the building. Yes, next week. In-person services. Next because week, we're in the building. In the building. 10, and 10, 1030 only. 1030 only. Yes. And then as we grow it back out, we'll yes. add a service. Yes. 8 o'clock is live stream. Yes. Oh, no in-person. Show up at 8. Have coffee somewhere, right? No. <laughs> <Ready? laughs> 8 o'clock is live streaming. Yes, live streaming. Eight. In-person service is 1030 starting next Sunday. And we will continue that pattern until we watch how things yes. grow out and sort of return to uh, the new normal, right? It, it, because if you, first of all, welcome to the, yeah. Long, the Long Island, the, the CCC Welcome experience. to the Long Island campus. Yeah, yeah. No, the CCC experience, you know, so we bring you greetings and we say thank you for vis, uh, viewing with us all over the globe. I want to give a shout out to our Long Island campus, our Brooklyn campus, and our Orlando campuses, and we're praying about our Atlanta campus. Ah, yes. Um, so you'll know we're, we're, what do you call, uh, cultivating... We're decentralizing our growth, but yes. cultivating the ground. Yes. Because I am going to be back on the air, on radio, Christian radio, in Atlanta, and um, just to begin to, you know, cultivate the soil of the mines, and in preparation for us to actually open a church there. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're working on that. Yes. Yeah. Hey, man, I like the, 
the outfit. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> I like your socks, though. Those are my clothes. I haven't worn your clothes since I was 12. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> I, was, was it, I was wearing a size 13 when I was 13. Right. You don't wear a 13. No. So I, <laughs> look at look at this zoom in on the can, in the socks. Look uh -oh, at those. Uh oh, you out here? I see you. You out here? I, hey, wait, I got I got initials right here. You have your initials? That's right, right on my socks. You got monogram socks? Yep. Let me see. Monogram socks. Let me see. Throw that up there. Let the people. Are you the man? That's it. Oh man. You took it up another level. I, well, it was a gift, so. That's all right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for the, whoever gave him that gift. It was a gift from California. You know who you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm excited today. I'm excited yeah. today. But I, let me say something to you. You know, um, I take, I, I'm just watching the growth of the ministry. We are in a new season of ministry, praise and worship, uh, word, watching you grow and the ministers as well. But watching you grow and develop in your prayer life, in your communication skills and all of that. It's just, I, I think that I can speak for the congregation as a whole. We're proud of you. Thank you. Um, and and you, 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 you earned it. I have to say, and you know, there's a lot of scandals that are going on in ministry. It's unfortunate. We have a generation, your generation, mm -hmm. of ministers who have emerged. And unfortunately, they have achieved in 10 years or so what it took us, my generation, 30 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So what happens, what's happening is they are blowing up in ministry faster than they are developing the character to sustain their success and their growth. Mm -hmm. So we had the time to develop internally as well as externally. But with all the technology and everything available to them and and the celebrity and personality-driven culture that we're in, you know, you can blow up in ministry. So you have a lot of these young ministers that are, you know, again, your, your peers, who have exploded, and now they're, they're in crisis. Either they're burning out, or there's just moral failure or some other issues within ministry, you know, and it's unfortunate. You, uh, please pray for pastors, yes. pray for churches around the world, not just here in America, it's happening around the mm -hmm. world. And the world looks at us and, you know, points a finger at us, yep. forgetting we're not perfect, we're, you know, we're human beings, but ministry is a high calling and it puts you out in the public eye and, you know, everything you do and say is not under the magnifying glass anymore, it's under the microscope. Yep. So that's, that's a reality. So we're, we're, we're praying. We pray for uh, colleagues in ministry, and, but that's real. That's real because you know the principle here. You've learned it at CCC. Your, your gift, talents, and abilities can take you to great heights that only your character can sustain. Yep. So if you don't develop your... I, I, beloved, I wish above all things yes. <laughs> that you prosper yes. and be in health but it is even as your soul prospers. The prosperity of the soul is critical to external prosperity. Internal prosperity and, and growth and development and health is important, just as important to external. Yeah, I, I think a, a part of it, looking at where I came from, you're know, doing our celebrity security, um, I saw the life. Hmm. And I think seeing that life helped me look at a perspective like they're still broken themselves. So why am I trying to be like that? Why do you want to be a celebrity? Yeah, why would you want to be a celebrity and look at the broken and woundedness of these individuals? Yeah. And, they, and you could see them searching. And um, because of that, I ended up losing a lot of jobs because of uh, my integrity. They, they felt they couldn't act a certain way in front of me. But um, I, I just thank God. And I tell people, I said, well, ultimately, if you follow Jesus, the man that introduced you to Jesus can't let you down because you're focused on Jesus. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Hey, that's good stuff. I like that. That's good preaching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, you look at the disciples, even though we are called to be living letters, mm -hmm. living epistles, yep. you know, written by the Holy Spirit. Our lives, our testimony bear witness to Christ, but in many ways, mm -hmm. you know, not just in a, or a perfect moral standard because we don't measure up 
You know, uh, we, we live out our faith in demonstrating our loyalty to God, our loyalty to Yahweh by the way we live our lives. But we are not perfect and we can't measure up to a moral standard. However, when you're in positions of leadership, the scripture says that you are held to a higher level yes. of accountability. Yep. That's real. Well, I got, I got a couple of questions, but before we get into the questions, we have uh, some housekeeping. Latter-day Saints? <laughs> yes, Latter-day Saints. We, because it, it, there, was, there was some conversation about why well, would pass the A.R. Bernard team up with the Latter-day Saints and what they stand for. And, um, and, and, and I, I, all I kept saying was, thank God, <laughs> this is not bad, but they, they, they would be even upset if they heard that the other individuals that blessed us and donated to us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, and, and me coming from the Pentecostal context, because when I in, in the Pentecostal church, man, everything was sin. Mm -hmm. The world was unclean. Yes. And you did not touch it. Mm -hmm. And I had to grow in my understanding of the scripture and God's perspective on culture. Mm -hmm. And also to watch Jesus through a lens that's not clouded by some religious tradition yes. or religious belief as opposed to scripture. Mm -hmm. So as I had gone through that process, I read, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, um, Jesus taught that defilement comes from within, mm -hmm. not from without. Yep. So he didn't teach that the unclean makes the clean unclean. He taught that the clean makes the unclean clean. Mm -hmm. Say it again, please. Really? <laughs> because this, you're, you're dismantling some of these, these religious views that individuals who are watching have. And, and as you dismantle it, sometimes you've got to take it a little slow because it hurts. All right. So, <laughs> well, you know, I was taught, come out from among them, be ye separate, saith mm -hmm. the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. What fellowship was light with darkness, yes. with Christ, with Belial? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that, that was it. And, and, and then on the other and side. so many people watching this came from that same I, school of thought. I, you know where I'm coming from. Yes. And, and then on the other side, I go into all the world, preach the gospel, <laughs> build relationships. And, you know, so how do you reconcile those two? Mm -hmm. how, how am I in the world and not of the world? Yes. And, and understanding that was important. But Jesus made it very, very clear when they were fussing about cleaning, you know, the outside of the cup while the inside was dirty. Yes. You know, uh, he, defilement does not come from without. Jesus mm -hmm. said it comes from within. In Matthew chapter 15, I think verse 19, he says, where, where does all this stuff yes. come from? Yep. It comes from within your mm -hmm. heart. Adultery yep. and lying and stealing and murder and all of that. So it, it's what's happening internally mm -hmm. that makes a difference. So... Um, he didn't want us to live in a fear of an unclean world that he put us in. If that were the case, he would have removed us. You yep. get saved, gone, mm -hmm. gone to heaven. No, he left us here. He said, Father, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but in the world, protect them from, and it really says the evil one, mm -hmm. Satan. Not just evil, but the evil one. Protect them from Satan. That was the prayer of his protection. And, and that, okay, let me behave. <laughs> El Satan. <laughs> so, so, you know, he left us here. They're in the world, but not of the world. So this whole idea that if we interact with people who believe differently, um, then, you know, uh, we become unclean mm -hmm. or defiled by them. And that's not biblical. Yeah, if you stay in a company of bad manners, you can pick up bad manners. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the spirituality that is inside of you. Greater is he, mm -hmm. the scripture says, that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if this is true... But he has to be great in you. Uh, kept, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the greater one lives yes. in us. So mm -hmm. I say that to say that there is something called God's common grace. Yes. When Jesus said that, that the Father lets his sun shine on, on the just. just and the unjust, he lets his rain fall on the just and the unjust. And that has to do with agriculture, crops, food, sustenance, provision. So there is what is called God's common grace. Mm -hmm. It is his grace to all of humanity. For God so loved the world, yes. not just certain people, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So there's what is called God's common grace that flows out of his nature, which is his love for all of humanity. That's why David says, what is man? He wasn't talking about Christians. We weren't around then. Yes. What is humanity that you have this love for them? Yep. That was David's question to Yahweh. And the response is that this is a very specific and special creation, creation of Yahweh with a, a vision that he had for humanity that was disrupted and he's, of course, redeeming and reconciling. But in the world... We build relationships. Mm -hmm. We build bridges for the common good. We're responsible for the common good. So uh, I'm part of a commission of religious leaders. It's, it's interfaith. So we have Muslims there. We have Muslim leaders, uh, Church of Latter-day Saints. We have uh, Catholic leaders. We have Jewish leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, so we come together for the common good of the city. And, and people don't realize that it's not just a church that chases after what breaks God's heart. You know, there's certain elements and certain things that are built in us as humanity, human, that still seek for the common good and are not necessarily Christians. And sometimes we, we can team up with these individuals that chase everything that breaks God's heart without them being a Christian. And what breaks God's heart? Mm -hmm. I mean, things like poverty yep. and, and, and hunger. He says, Justice. I was naked, you clothed yep. me. I was hungry, you fed me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was in prison, prison. You, you, you visited you visit me. me. Yep. You know. These are the things that are dear to God's heart. Mm -hmm. So when we can partner with others who also feel that sensitivity to what's dear to God's heart, we can work together. And I can do that without losing my salvation, mm -hmm. without losing my faith. It takes a level of maturity, I understand. Did y'all uh, see that teacher moment just now? <laughs> I said breaks God's heart. He changed and said uh, is dear to God's heart, which makes more sense because then you got questions about can, can God's heart be broken? So you, did you see that teacher moment just <laughs> yeah, now? He just taught me to say, no, change your, <laughs> change your language, Jamal, and hey, this is how you're going to use this language called dear to God's heart. Thank you for that language. He knows me. He's been with me. <laughs> well, he knows me. Yeah, so, so, so things that are dear to God's heart, you want to be dear to your own mm -hmm. heart and respond. Like justice. Yes. All right? God does not want justice just for Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants justice as something that is part of the world, yes. part of humanity. Yep. He wants justice. He wants mercy. Right? He wants equity. Um, all of those things are important. They're dear to God's heart. So whenever we take up anything that's dear to God's heart and someone else may do, do it also, mm -hmm. we can work together. Yeah. So, um, and there, there, there are levels and limits, you know, boundaries that we create. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's just certain markers that we won't go past and uh, working with other organizations. So yeah. there are uh, boundaries. Yeah, I, I, and there are boundaries. And, and let me tell you something. When you know what you believe, yes. when you are persuaded, like Paul mm -hmm. said, you can sit down with anybody. Yes. And they may disagree with you, have a different opinion, idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You know, I, I, even within the body of Christ, all right? A dear friend of mine loved this brother. Um, so, so sorry that, you know, he ended up leaving early, Dr. Miles Monroe. Um, we did a, a, what was called a love cruise, which oh. is a marriage uh, <laughs> conference on a boat, on yes. a cruise ship. For 10 years, we did it together every year. And as a son, don't go, <laughs> or your child, don't go and listen to the conversation uh, on this love cruise so, so, from your parents. Uh, all right, so <laughs> we, yeah, we talked about everything. Yes, it was everything. raw. It was raw. And, 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 and Dr. Miles, an incredible teacher, and we had disagreements about the kingdom of God. He had a, a sort of a monarchical, you know, perspective on the kingdom from the British influence within his cultural mm -hmm. context. And we would, we, would, we, would, we would go at it with each other theologically and then determine what restaurant we were going to go hang out and eat and enjoy each yes. other's company. Yes. Uh, and, and that's the way it should be in, in, in relationships because you understand what's important, what, what unites us, what brings us together, especially as Christians. And there are yes. two things that unite us as Christians. We may differ in, 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 in you know, doctrinal Christians. things and traditional things mm -hmm. and on and on and on. But the, the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. the reign and rule of God, we have to agree on that. Yes. That unites us. And secondly, the lordship of Christ. Yep. Life, death, the resurrection. He is Lord, Christ. right? And that comes out of his life, death, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. So that unites us. That makes us one. So, 
So that's why we work. So we, we work, work with, with <laughs> getting because back to you, that. You said a couple of things within uh, the explanation, which leads to, you know, looking at, uh, we're in the year of presence, right? Looking at the presence of God. And, you know, and I got, you know, two questions because, like I said before, you know, you know use Jesus as the best example, right? Because you, 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 if you lean too much on the man uh, that led you to Christ, your, 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 your salvation tends to lean more on that man than the the person of Jesus Christ. You know, so, you know, we look at your presence. So we, I know we need to talk about the presence of God. That's our theme. Right? Presence That's of theme. God in Jesus, mm-hmm. which is another complicated, you know, uh, conversation. And then also the presence of God in, in, in man. In the believer. Right? In the believer. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, make sure you say believer. Right? Mm-hmm. In the believer. The one with the authentic relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Right? Because uh, that was some of the... Uh, the, the controversy, uh, you know, in, the, in, in Constantine's time, you know, the, where they were trying to set certain canonization of the Bible and, you know, looking at the presence of God, which, of God and Jesus. So please, you know, let's, can we go there and looking at the person of Jesus? It, it's such a, a fascinating, exa- inexhaustible uh, conversation that we can have. The, the, and, and it's consistent with our theme. Our theme this year is yes. presence. And when you think of the presence of God, like I was wrestling through um, a passage of Scripture, and it caused me to reflect on Jesus' words when he said that, you know, I'm, I'll be back. Yes. Essentially, I'm, I'm going to return. And he spoke it with immediacy. It's like it wasn't going to be 2,000 years later. It was going to be immediate. So how do we reconcile that with the fact that he hasn't returned, or did he return, or did he meet it in a different way? So when you look at the scripture, all right, he spoke of his return from the dead, which he rose from the dead. Yes. And he was seen and experienced within a 40-day period, uh, the disciples, after his resurrection. He, uh, hundreds of individuals I, attest. Over uh, 500, yep, yeah. 500. And, and, and you know, he, he, ta- he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And, and as he was leaving, you know, he spent time with his disciples who saw him, who saw him leave. So he did return from the dead after his resurrection. But then there is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Whom he said would come. Mm-hmm. So he pointed, John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water mm-hmm. unto repentance. So this is a baptism of repentance. When I baptize you in water, it means you're repenting of your sins, mm-hmm. right? But there comes one after me whose, you know, sandals I'm not worthy of oh, untying. Yes. And then one, one, one uh, gospel says, I'm not worthy of carrying. He said, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and fire. Mm. And then he continues to say the winnowing fan is in his hand. And a winnow is where, winnowing is where you, 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 the farmer would take a fork, a mm-hmm. fork and throw the wheat up into the air so the wind would blow it and it would separate the chaff from the wheat. And the chaff is what you would throw away. That was unproductive. And the wheat is what you would keep. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you said, you, know, you, you, you went through a progression, and you said, you know, through fire. <laughs> That's why I'm talking about the chaff, because okay. he said right. the, the chaff is going to be burned by fire. Mm. So there are two references that John made to fire, one in association with the Holy Spirit, yes. and one that has to do with judgment, mm-hmm. the eternal judgment. And too often we can confuse that. So when he said baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, that fire associated with the Holy Spirit is not about hell not and con- judgment. No condemnation. No, no. It's about purification. Mm-hmm. It's about sanctification. Because when the Holy Spirit would come, he would begin in the believer by bringing the presence of God to the believer. He would begin a process of cleaning that person's life up the way they think, the way they live, their choices, etc. So that's why when John said that, all right, then we fast forward to uh, Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And what what happened on the day of Pentecost? They were (laughs) gathered together and there was a rushing mighty wind Mm -hmm. from heaven, right? And what did they experience? Tongues of 
fire yep. resting upon each one of them, which was a fulfillment of what John was talking about. Mm -hmm. So that was Jesus coming in the person of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is present with us today, all right, by the Holy Spirit. So he still came, and he's going to come again in physical person, right, in bodily form, yep. which the scripture says. So we have to understand how, you know, how all of this, this happens. So he is present here yes. among us mm -hmm. in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and he, he said it. He said, if, I'm, if I stay here, I'm confined to this body, mm -hmm. essentially, paraphrasing. I'm confined to the, this body. But if, if I go, I'm going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will be present in every believer. Mm -hmm. So now the presence of God, all right, which was in the temple, moved into the physical body of Jesus. And that presence now moves from the physical body of Jesus to the body of believers. Yes. Which yes. collectively becomes the body of Christ. Now, so there's the presence of, of, of Yahweh. And that's why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've, seen the, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. The Father is in me. The works that I do are the works that the Father is doing through me. The words that I speak are not mine, but the words of the Father. Yeah. See, he, was try he said, you believed in God. He told the Jewish people, now believe in me. Why was he saying that? Because there was no doubt in the Jewish mind, belief in Yahweh. Yes. That was settled. But to transfer the same belief that they had in Yahweh to Jesus, that was the problem. Yep. And, and, and that was a challenge. That's why he said, he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. So he was trying to let them know that the Father actually did what he said he was going to do, and that was to incarnate himself in the yes. person of yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. <laughs> so Yahweh was, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yes. And that is, is that is a mind blower. How do you take the fullness of God? And veil it in a body without destroying that body and, or destroying what, what, what was around that body. And you can see the power of it because, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, well, and, and, I'm no, in a stream here. This is good because this the, is the, 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 the place the, of tension for uh, so many non-believers. This is the place of tension. How can this all-knowing, all-powerful, almighty being... He's in control of his power. So, so in, in Matthew 17, he takes Peter, James, and John mm -hmm. up to what is called the Mount of Transfiguration. Took them up to a mountain. It became the Mount of Transfiguration mm -hmm. because he transfigured before them. This cloud opens up. Yes. They literally see Elijah the prophet mm -hmm. and Moses. Moses. Yep. Jesus enters the cloud and has a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's like him entering another dimension of existence that he drew back the curtains of. Yes. When he did it, they said it, they saw his whole body, his clothes and everything lit up. So what was inside of him, the glory and power mm -hmm. that he had mm -hmm. under control yes, yes. was inside of him, began to manifest mm -hmm. in a way that his whole body became lit up. Mm. So, so, yeah, God and his power can be in a human body, mm -hmm. but under control. Yes, under control. Please and and, and when it enters a situation where it's it, 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 dimensional conversations going on, and, and Moses and Elijah, because they represented the law and the prophets, yes. which would testify to the gospel, mm -hmm. all right, um, that took it to another level, and it affected him. And that's not strange, because when Moses spent time yep, with, with God. Yahweh, yes. it affected him that physically yes. when he came down. He, the reason he put a veil on his, <laughs> uh, over his face was to hide the so glory was, that was coming <laughs> out of him. Oh, man. <sighs> Yes. This is real, people. This yes. is not myth or, mm -hmm. or some fantasy thing. You know, it may sound fantastical, but this is, this is God. So, so it, is, it is a, and I wrote it on the board, it is the pattern of incarnation. It's a pattern of incarnation. It was all about God's presence mm -hmm. in the earth. Beginning with the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. God's presence was there. Man was in his presence. Yes. Man sinned. Had to be removed from the garden, but not his presence. Mm -hmm. Because when Cain was cast out because of murder, 
He said, you're casting me from your presence. So yeah. God's presence was still, still there, there. Mm-hmm. even though they were outside the garden. Mm-hmm. And why was God's presence still there? Because he was still in relationship with, with humanity. Yes. Oof, God, I <laughs> try to finish this in English. <laughs> so the pattern of the incarnation is what's critical. And these, these verses are so important to me because this is how I got saved. The night I got saved... Nikki Cruz was preaching, mm-hmm. January 11th. Your, your natural birthday yes. is my spiritual birthday. Yes. <laughs> but what meaneth this? I know. What was God saying what then? What does that mean? <laughs> so. <laughs> and so, I wasn't supposed to be born January 11th. I came early. Th- you did show up early, didn't yes. you? Yes. It's true. That's good. <laughs> so that night, the Lord sees my heart. And I've got the language now. I didn't know what was mm-hmm. going on then. And I heard two things inside of me, inner man. I, I, I'm the God you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And I knew intuitively that it was Jesus. Yes. And that was important because prior to that, in, in my context, Jesus was a prophet in a long line prophets, of prophets. Yes. Leading but, up to but the fact that he is Yahweh, that mm-hmm. he, is, he is, is God, the eternal God, that, that, was, that was a stretch. Mm-hmm. But that night, that settled inside of me. I, uh, he, he said, I am the God that you're looking for. I knew intuitively. There was no discussion. There was no question. Mm-hmm. But, but, but. It, there was no, it was just, it was a revelation that hit me deeply, profoundly, and was cemented inside of me in that moment. Second thing, I and my word are one. Mm-hmm. After I heard that, right, everything changed. Because no longer was he the Jesus that I saw in pictures and movies. Mm -hmm. He was now the Jesus of the book. Yes. So I went up front. Nikki Nikki Cruz called us. I went up to the altar. He prayed. He said, we want to receive Jesus. I said, yes. I felt like I might put a blowtorch in my chest. (laughs) And and God did something deep in my heart. I didn't understand it because when I I was crying and everything, when, when I got your mom, she was with me. We went... To the, to the back of the church, my secretary who, who, who introduced Christ to me, right? Um, she asked me, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? I said, I don't know. I don't know what I was supposed to get. All I know is something just happened to me. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to figure it out, trying to work it out. Uh, but that was a defining moment. But that word, I and my word are one. Then I discovered John chapter one. Yes. In the beginning was the Word. word. I didn't know that. And the word was with God. Mm -hmm. And the word was was God. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with God. Mm -hmm. All things were made by him. him. Now it moves from a word to a him, to a person. Uh, Without him was not anything made that was made. In Mm -hmm. him was life. And the life was the light Light of of men. And I was big on light and illumination Mm -hmm. and wisdom and understanding, you know, coming from my my old context. So in him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light entered the darkness. Yes. And the darkness could not comprehend it, could not not subdue it, could not absorb it. I'm thinking about when I was (laughs) in the hospital with COVID, Mm -hmm. right? Could not extinguish it. And those words came back. So... And then what, what really sealed it was verse 14. Mm. And if we, let, let's look at that. John chapter 1, verse 14. Because that is the pattern of the incarnation. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the word, I'm reading, in fact, let me go to the English Standard Version, ESV. ESV, okay. And the word became flesh. Yes. Means it took on a human body, Mm -hmm. right? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It was not the first time that Yahweh or Jesus Mm -hmm. manifested in human form. You look at the Old Testament, there are what are called theophanies, Mm -hmm. appearances of God in human form. Angels appeared. Mm Mm-hmm looking like men. They were identified by human beings as men, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, 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 and they're called Christophanies, which is the appearance of Christ in human forms. But the difference is he became flesh, a body, mm-hmm. and dwelt among 
us. He entered culture. He entered human society. He entered human history. And he stayed there. He remained. It was not one of those things where he was there for a situation or a moment. You know, let us go down and see if the sins of Sodom is what we've heard, if the cries of... No, it wasn't like that. Let us go down and see what they're building, this tower. Mm -mm. He dwelt among us. He he was born. That's why the angels were blown away at the baby Jesus. Mm -hmm. So here it is. All right. And dwelt among us. He, be, he, he, he inserted himself in human history and culture. And that's important. He, he inserted himself in human culture. And we have seen his glory, his honor, his, his dignity, his, his, his essence, his divinity, all of that, you know, his value, his worth, because the glory of an object is its intrinsic value, its worth. So we saw his glory the glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. My whole Christian orientation, my whole Christian life is based on that particular verse. And that's why Christ in culture is so important to me. Because what happened was the presence of God entered humanity through a body. Yes. A physical body. It, it didn't come down as, as you know, some, <laughs> something you see in science fiction. No. Ate, breathed, slept, walked, talked, just like us. Mm-hmm. That was tremendous. So why do I call it the, 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 the pattern of the incarnation? Because everything that God does, he does, come on, according like to a... Pattern. Pattern and based on a principle. And based on a principle. Say it again. According. Everything that God does, He does according to a pattern, pattern and, and based, based on a principle. Principle. Right? So the Genesis pattern is everything begins in seed form, form and, and then grows experience. into an experience. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So Isaiah 55. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. And 11. For as the, um, in fact, verse 9, I'm going to start at verse 9, sorry. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower. And bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing which I sent it. Mm. That is powerful. Yes. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. So the the invincibility... And the, the, in, the inf- invincibly productive, invincibly productive. The invincibly productive power of God's word. Mm. I'm going say that again. The mm-hmm. invincibly productive power of God's word. What did he say? My word's gone out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. It will not return empty, yep. void, King James language, but will accomplish that which I've sent it to accomplish in the thing mm-hmm. that I sent it to. And that's why, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go to Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Talking about the nation of Israel. He sent his word and heal them and deliver them from the destruction. How does God heal and deliver? Through his word. Jesus cast out demons with his word, mm-hmm. the scripture says. He spoke to the winds. He spoke to the storm. He spoke to sickness and disease. The power of the word was oh man, being transacted yes. while he was here. Mm-hmm. He was demonstrating the power of the word. So God sends his word, right? Look at, let's look at Luke chapter 7. Um, it's the story of the, the centurion, right? Mm-hmm. We'll go to verse 1. After he had finished all his sayings, 
Luke, Luke 7, 1. After he had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered, Jesus entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. That's interesting. Notice mm -hmm. the relationship. Mm -hmm. They're accomplishing a common good there. Mm -hmm. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word, say the word. and let my servant be healed. Mm -hmm. For I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. Jesus is marveling at the centurion. And turning to the crowd, the Jews, right, that followed him said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well or healed. Jesus was just excited about mm -hmm. the man grasping it. Well, what did he understand? He understood authority. Yes. The authority and power of his word mm -hmm. because of the position that he held. Mm -hmm. So he, when he said something, those soldiers got to move. Yep. He understood. He translated that ah, to yes. Jesus. Yes. He acknowledged that Jesus had this level of authority that all he had to do was say something. Yes. And there would be results. There would be outcome. So I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Mm -hmm. Speak about the word. Yes. And my servant would. Just yes. send your word. Yes. You don't have to come physically. Yes. Send your word. <laughs> so what did Jesus, what did God do? What is the pattern? God took his, oh, God. Wait, another, another. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 4. Hebrews 10, 4. And, and, and the conversation here is about the sacrifice, right? For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, where? Came into the world. He said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. Remember what? We're back. Yes. We're live. Thank you. We're back. What happened? We lost power. <laughs> yes, we lost power. Uh, we don't know if it was Con Ed or who, but the power, the, it, the word was, it was, it was powerful. Like that. You know, they, they can't stop us, though. They can't? Can't stop, won't Invincibly stop. Invincibly productive. Yes, yes. Oh, man. So let's pick up where we left off First, in we, we apologize. Uh, thank you, uh, you know, for the staying on. Yeah, uh, yeah, for those of you who stayed on. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, of course, this is in, in the, the following services. Yes. 1030 and, and, and 1 o'clock and 6 o'clock, we had a power disruption. Mm -hmm. And we are picking up where we left off. Yep. So um, the word's still working. And, and the reason why is because of what was being preached was, it was very difficult to try to reduplicate that. Yeah. There was some good stuff in yeah, that. I, yeah, you didn't want to lose all of that content. You get in the flow of it, yes. and that's where you want to stay. So I think I was at verse 7 in Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, then I said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me, in the scroll of the book. Yes. And I was talking about how Jesus said, it, the book is written about me. You know, he, he shared with them himself throughout the law, the prophets, and the psalm. But the most important thing here is where he said that, uh, consequently, when Christ, verse 5, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. Uh, and then the, the text that we're looking at, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, verse 14 in chapter 1 of John, and the Word became flesh. 
Jesus told a parable in Mark chapter 4. He said the sower sows the word. Mm -hmm. So in the gospel of Mark, it is sowing the word uh, into a human heart, giving that word a body. Yes. Got it? And then in Matthew 13, Jesus gives a parable of sowing people into the world. So that's the pattern of the incarnation. God sends his word to heal and to deliver. God's creative power is in his word. God's creative power is in his word. So when he's going to heal, when he's going to deliver, when he's going to liberate, whatever he's going to do, he sends his word. When he's going to create, what mm -hmm. does he use? His, his word. word. So God always sends his word to heal and deliver. But that word in human context needs a body. body. Mm -hmm. So the incarnation was the first demonstration of that pattern where God takes his word, gives it a body, the word Jesus, mm -hmm. into the body Jesus, and then sends him into the world. And what does he do? He heals, he delivers, he feeds, he, he, he counteracts all of the ills of society and the ills of human existence, including death. Yes. Then, what does he do? Takes that word and puts it in our heart. And we become the embodiment of the word. So just as the word was made flesh in Jesus, the word is made flesh in mm -hmm. us. If, if I can draw a, a pattern here. Because the question is, you know, as you're saying that, you're, you're, okay, what word was placed in us? The word Christ. So Jesus is in our hearts. Yes. He is, right? We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we are the temple of his presence. Yep. But Jesus is in us. He is the word. So the word, the Bible, the scripture comes alive in us mm -hmm. in a very powerful way in the person of Christ by the Holy Spirit, but also in the text of scripture coming alive as we live it out. Mm. So God sends his word to heal, but he gives that word a body, and then he sends that body into the world. God sends his word, gives it a body, and sends that body into the world to heal and deliver. And deliver. So he's not sending us He's not sending a, a specific word. So for those individuals who are looking for a specific, a specific word, word, right? <laughs> <laughs> because you have those individuals there. He said, so God plays a specific word. And you, 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 the reason why, because I'm trying to balance out uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that's out there, you know, and the, the, the mis-teachings that have been you know, plaguing our Christian bad uh, body. Yes, bad, bad teaching. And, you know, they'll, they'll go in and say, well, God put a word, and you now you need to go and run with that word, you know, the, the, you know, for the rest of your life. And the question is, what, what is that word? Is it a specific word, or is it something bigger? You know, and, and that's the thing. His word is the word of Christ and the Scripture. Mm -hmm. And from the Scripture, we get, now we get into how do we hear God's voice, mm -hmm. and how do we respond to spiritual promptings, and all of that. We'll get there. So... God's word is where it begins. Mm -hmm. And he, his word and his presence are one. So he takes his word, gives it a body, and then sends that body into the world to bring healing. So just as the word was incarnated in Christ, the word is now incarnated in us. Mm. Not because we go through some virgin birth or something like that. No, 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 no. We were born again. We were born of the Word. The Word gave birth to us. Yes. The Word now takes up residence inside of us as a body, and we live it out in the world. So it is only when the Word of God, all right, that book, the Bible, is lived out can we see its true value, the glory. So the only way we can see the true value of the word is when it's lived out. When it's lived out in human form, when it's fleshed out. That's when, so the text in verse 14, John chapter 1, and the word became flesh mm -hmm. and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory. 
So it's only when the word is dwelling through a body mm -hmm. amongst human beings, in humanity, in culture, that the culture gets to experience the glory, the power of the word. And that's why our walk is so significant. So important. Yeah. So important. Yes. So essentially, you know, I, and that's why God can say, and I love this passage in, in, in the book of Acts as we kind of bring this to a close. Uh, in, in Acts chapter 18, verse 9, this is so beautiful. I don't, I don't want to back up too much. Verse 8, we'll top there. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his, this, his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, the apostle, mm -hmm. believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent. Mm -hmm. For I... Listen, I am with you and no one will attack you to harm you for I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. Notice what God says. I got people there. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? God knows where all of his people are. Mm -hmm. And he has a plan and a purpose for wherever he has planted them. Whatever city, whatever, whatever nation, Whatever context, educationally, economically, doesn't matter. God knows exactly where you are, and he has a purpose for you yes. where you are. Yes. And for him to say, I have people there, it means that he's also working with other people mm -hmm. in anticipation of Hit other right. people yeah. <laughs> that he will bring together and connect. There are believers in that city. There are believers here. There are believers in that family. So that is the word embodied in human beings and released into the field of the world. Yeah, it, it, that's, there's, so much, there's so much we need to unpack with that uh, statement and it, because the, the, the wrestle, you know, we, we, we got to identify that there's a wrestling with our own humanity in that word. Yeah. And there's a tension for us to live out this, 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 this walk with God and, you know, still in our broken and wounded state. But that's very real. Think about this. And here's the reality. Jesus was not broken and wounded like us. No. And yet he experienced the tension between his human will mm -hmm. and the will of the Father. Yes. He prayed, Father, if it be possible, take this cup. Yep. And what did, what did the cup represent? Death. Mm -hmm. Can we do this some other way? Yes. And then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but, but thy will be done. So even in his state of perfection and completion, right, he still wrestled with the reality of the two forces at work, mm -hmm. his own will, right, and the will of the Father. And that own will was being influenced by the reality of facing death. So we have to work through it. Yeah. And, and it could, because there are real tensions. I remember speaking last year and I told, you know, you know really looking at how people are walking, can, can walk out of here, saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, but yet there is a uh, proclivity that they deal with. And, you know, walking past the, the liquor store. And it's like, I've just got, you know, I just left church. I just, you know, you know, received, you know, got energized, got, you know, encouraged to walk this walk. And then you see the liquor store and it's like, you know, I have that tension, you know, and do I not, do I walk in the liquor store? Do I not walk in the liquor store? But these tensions are so real and so strong yeah. and trying to live out this Christian difference with such tensions. Some people are, you know, are, are have, have, I just feel, I feel for the people who are walking this walk with the tension and bearing on their back, the stress of, of, of that. You have to arrange your life and relationships in such a way that protect you from your own weaknesses. Mm, say it again, please. You have to arrange your life and your relationships in such a way that that arrangement protects you from your own weakness. Say that one more time, please. <laughs> please, you got to say that one more time. <laughs> you have to arrange your life mm -hmm. and your relationships in such a way that protects you from your own weaknesses. Yes. So if you know you have certain weaknesses and proclivities, right, then you must arrange your life in a way that protects you. Yes. There are certain things just out of... Out, uh, out of respect uh, and, 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 and protocol, 
that I engage in, all right, to protect myself from gossip and, and mm-hmm. hearsay and, 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 and other finger pointing from me as a pastor. Yes. So I, I, I try to be very careful, my interactions with the opposite sex, my interactions with individuals. If, I, if I'm going to meet, I'm going to make sure that it is never in a, a compromising way. So I've built into my life things that, that, you know, protect me from the external realities and also keep myself now. And look, look think about it. When, when you want to live healthy, mm-hmm. not just lose weight, but because lose weight, losing weight is the byproduct of a healthy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Healthy diet, yep. Right? So Everybody if you want to engage diet. in, a, yeah, it's not Everybody a diet. Everybody has a diet. Yeah, it's about right. a healthy it's, it's lifestyle. Either, the question is, is it a good diet or a bad diet? But everybody's on a diet. <laughs> yeah, everybody's <laughs> eating, right? And, you know, I, God told me about a seafood diet. <laughs> seafood, I eat. Yeah, whenever you eat seafood, I eat. So, <laughs> that's like so a, you got a... That's like a, the Hebrews. Uh, that was a quick one. Yeah, that was <laughs> right by. So you, 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 what do you do when you are living a healthy lifestyle? You arrange your life, your time, your eating habits, all of that, in a way to protect you. Mm -hmm. If you know you like certain things, and and the Bible speaks of displacement, the power and law of displacement, all right? Instead of replacing, displace it. Mm -hmm. Force something else into the situation or into the diet, all right, that takes the place of what's bad, Mm -hmm. but you force something that's good. Yes. And so you begin to, to change your eating habits. You still eat Mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, you should not be starving yourself. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to eat and it's what you eat and the portions that you, you know, you should control that you will have the byproduct of of, of losing weight. You you don't know how many, how many people delivered by this conversation right here, you know, because you're really wrestling with, I want to represent Christ and culture. I really, I, I really want to represent Christ and culture, but you know, like like Paul says, is, is that I know what to do good, mm-hmm. right? I mm-hmm. know that you know what to do. I know I need to do good, but you know, for some reason, I find myself doing the opposite of good, you know. And so that just delivers. So and that's people, a law. And you're watching. You know, you're watching. There is a law that you know, that that does. Um, Fights, you know, pushes you towards that. So, but just thank you for that. Let me give a word. Let me give okay. a word. It, the Apostle Paul says, all things are lawful for me. So there is the liberty that I have mm-hmm. in Christ. But he said, all things are not expedient. Mm-hmm. And the word expedient, expedient, suitable for achieving a particular end in a given circumstance. Mm. You see? So when you have a goal in life yes. to live a, a certain moral level of life, right? Then there are things that you that are lawful that you can do, but it's not good for you to do it. Yes, yeah. Plain and simple. And what may be good for someone else may not be good for you. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand and conduct yourself in a way that takes you in the direction of your dreams and your goals and your objectives mm-hmm. and your standards, not in some other direction. Yeah, and that's, and that that's where that statement I made I have came, I came up with that your convictions are DNA to who you are as an individual. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's it. DNA to it. It's part of who you are. It's in the genes. Yep. So, so that's, that's, that's very, very important. So there is a liberty that we have in Christ. However, there is wisdom to say that we're going to arrange our lives in a way that protects us against any weaknesses that we may have. Yes. That's so good. Amen. Amen. I think we've gone way over yes, time, yes. but we, we wanted to recapture where we left off and share a word with you. But we're going to get more into the presence of God in Christ, yes. first of all, and to see for you to see how he lived out the, 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 the Christian difference, because we could see it by observing his life in the Gospels. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to turn to the presence of God in us as believers and how we live out the Christian difference and some of the tensions that come with that and some of the questions mm-hmm. that come with that as well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey. Come on, man. You're the prayerer. I'm Just the prayer. Prayer. Well, but, pray us out. As, as, as I pray <laughs> and the minister gets into place, um, don't quit. That's all I got to say is don't quit. Don't quit. Stay strong. Stay focused. And if I'm talking to you, don't quit. Father God, thank you so much. And as we receive a lot of this information, we ask that you just touch our minds, that that we go through the process of comprehending 
through divine revelation and divine understanding of what we received, looking to represent Christ in culture. What does that mean with the presence of God in us? What does it mean that word called Jesus Christ planted in our hearts? Lord, help us not only understand it, but then start functioning in a manner that speaks to the understanding we received as we walk out this Christian difference, as we unapologetically represent Christ in culture. Lord, we ask that you have your way. We're not asking for you to make it easier, but Lord, if you just show up and help us. Because there's certain points that we know that we can't do it by ourselves. So Lord, as you have promised, as we ask, we shall receive. So Lord, we're asking right now for you to show up in a a mightier way to show up in a, in a, in a way that, that we have not seen you before. For everyone who's watching, Lord, we ask that you just anoint them with discernment to see when and how you will show up. So, Lord, we ask that you just have your way and say thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, thank you for that seed. In Jesus' precious name, thank you for that word. In Jesus' yes, precious Lord. name, thank you for you. Hallelujah, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. There may be someone who heard the words today and uh, God has touched your heart. Someone needs to be reminded of their faith, of their reason why. Two things that Pastor Jamal said. He said, will you let go of him? And during this pandemic, so many, so many things have occurred where your faith was tested. And some of you have let go of God's hand. And I pray that right now you make a decision to reconnect. Reconnect with God. Amen. And the second thing he said, he said, pray and move. Get up and move. So right now. If I'm speaking to you, there's a number on the, on the uh, screen that you could call in. And I, I believe right now, hallelujah, that somebody is standing by to take you through a process to accept Jesus in your heart. Just like Pastor did when he received the revelation that Jesus was the God that he was looking for. Hallelujah. So right now, we ask that you would open your hearts and respond to this call. God is knocking at the door of your heart. Will you let him in? Will you let him come in and turn your life around? Will you allow him the opportunity to walk with you? Hallelujah. Because you don't have to do this thing by yourself. As a matter of fact, you can't do this by yourself. And if you have made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, and you have accepted him, and you are now a part of this family of God, Call in and let somebody know. Tell somebody about what God has done for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, and welcome to the body of believers. You can do this. You can do this. Well, that was great. Excited. We got to end here. As Real we, quick, right? Yeah. Is, is there a text or... or some place that they call if they yes, save their life. Yes, uh, you save on the screen. Three one two five zero two six eight eight, or you can call seven one eight three zero six one zero six one. Amen. One zero six one. Yes, as we leave this place, but never God's, God's presence. presence. Jesus is, is Lord. Period. period. We, we believe, believe it. We proclaim, proclaim it, and we receive it. Come, come to pass. pass. Thanks for being with us. God, God bless. bless. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, your week. Family, thank you so much for watching CCC's YouTube channel. If you feel what you just experienced impacted your life in any way, we encourage you to like, subscribe, and share this video with others so we can fulfill our mission in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. We welcome you to check out some of our other videos. Also, make sure to click the notification bell so you are the first to know when we post a new one. Our praise and worship team brings us a powerful and dynamic live worship experience every Sunday. And trust me and Cameron when I say you do not want to miss it. Streaming times are in the description box below. 
And if you are looking for any other information about what's happening here at CCC, visit www.cccinfo.org. We hope to see you next Sunday, but for now, continue to have a blessed week in the Lord.